Hello everyone and welcome to this short course on recognizing pain in snakes and other reptiles. Today is Saturday, April 10th, 2021. I am Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. I am a certified professional animal trainer and my degree is in zookeeping. But for this particular subject matter, I feel it's important to point out that for 29 years I worked as a veterinary assistant and receptionist. For six of those years, I did that full time and part of that time was spent at an animal emergency center. So this is a subject that I feel particularly comfortable sharing with you and it's an important one because pain obviously impacts the welfare of any individual animal as does our ability to promptly recognize that that animal is in pain and get that pain ma managed promptly or as quickly as we possibly can. What is pain? Pain is physical suffering or discomfort caused by illness or injury. This includes nociception, which is the perception of a painful or injurious stimulus by our sensory nervous system. And that just means that we have nociceptors, which are types of nerve cells, and they produce signals from that point of pain origin. They send those signals to the spinal cord, and then those signals are sent from the spinal cord to the brain, where we then recognize a painful, harmful, or potentially harmful stimuli that we should try to move away from or manage in some way. Okay, let's talk just a little bit more about that pain pathway that I mentioned in the previous slide. The first thing that happens is those specialized nerve cells, the nociceptors, pick up a potentially noxious stimulus from the environment. And it might be something minor or it could be something major. So in the case of a needle prick, that is a minor noxious stimulus. And a noxious stimulus is how a stimulus is described when it has the potential to cause tissue damage or harm to an organism. Or that stimulus could be something quite severe as is pictured in this horse's leg at the top. So the organism has encountered some type of harmful stimulus, the nociceptors recognize that, and they send that information to the spinal cord through chemical, electrical, and mechanical signals. From the spinal cord, through those same type of signals, that message gets sent to the brain where we become aware of it or our snake or other reptile becomes aware of it, and then we or they perceive pain. That brings us to the question, do snakes and other reptiles feel pain? The answer is yes, of course they feel pain. Reptile anatomy and physiology is equipped to detect and perceive pain, just the way that other vertebrates nervous systems can detect pain, reptiles nervous systems can do the same thing. They have peripheral nociceptors and all the necessary parts in their central nervous system including all the neurological pathways throughout the body to the spinal cord and then to the brain to perceive and become aware of pain. This is an interesting illustration from zenodo.com of a Python Regis brain that was made from an MRI image of a Python Regis brain. They also have images of other reptiles there and of African house snake brains. You can see those on YouTube or you can go to zenodo.com if you're interested in that, but it clearly shows that snakes have the same basic vertebrate brain plan as the rest of us. They have a forebrain, a midbrain, and a hindbrain. They have a cerebellum. They also have something that isn't shown here, but it's called a dorsal ventricular ridge, which is thought to be homologous to the mammalian neocortex. Snakes and other reptiles can demonstrate painful behaviors. So how can we recognize when they're in pain? Well, we might notice pain avoidance behaviors, and that means that they're trying to get away from a source of pain or a potential source of pain, or they're trying to get away from something that has caused them pain in the past. It also could be the absence of normal behaviors, as well as the presence of abnormal behaviors. So in order for us to recognize these things in our snake or our other reptile, we must be able to understand normal species specific behavior within the environmental context it's being displayed. And we have to know what is normal and abnormal for individual animals in our care. 
in this photo, one of my Morelia Bradley is pictured. Her name is Salea, and this is absolutely a 100% normal behavior for her, and I know that. If she was doing something in place of this behavior, I would definitely recognize it as something new or unusual, or maybe even something abnormal. And if I failed to see her doing this behavior, I would also notice that as an absence of her doing a behavior that she does every day. And I would know that I need to investigate further as to why she's not doing the behavior. So painful behaviors in reptiles is something that is outlined in this book called Exotic Animal Neurology. And it has a really handy table in here, which is basically something I copied for this PowerPoint. So I've, I'm crediting this book now, and I also am gonna give you the reference for this book at the end. But there's this handy table right here that I took all of these pain indicators directly from. I did change the order so that they would be a little bit easier for us to talk about. So let's go through them because this is really the important meat of this presentation that you should have been waiting for. How can I notice if my snake or other reptile is actually in pain? Well, decreased to absent normal behaviors. So if normal behaviors are significantly reduced or the animal is not displaying normal behaviors at all, that is a red flag that the animal could be in pain. Decreased to absent interactive behaviors or decreased activity overall. For example, if I normally train the snakes or give them exercises to do like foraging or puzzle feeders and they actively engage in these activities and one day I offer it to them and they're not interested at all or maybe they're not even acknowledging it, that would be decreased, or actually that would be the absence of an interactive behavior that the animal normally does. Hunched posture, and that may vary between species, but any type of hunched posture in your snake or other reptile could indicate that they're painful in some area. Decreased food intake, rubbing an affected area, Head carriage can be an indicator of pain, especially if the head is extended or held away from the body aggressiveness in passive animals, passive behavior in aggressive animals. So in other words, if the animal's just behaving in a manner that's unusual and un, um, abnormal for them, then that can be an indicator that they're in some type of pain. Aerophagia, which is just gulping air or swallowing air, or if it appears that the reptile is continuously swallowing, that can be an indicator that they're in pain. These I wanted to talk about in a little more detail because they're a little bit more species specific. So these are all part of that same list that I showed you from the book, but I wanted to talk about them just a little bit more in depth because you might think that some of them are unusual when we're discussing reptiles like this first one, lameness. Lameness is something we hear all the time in the horse world, sometimes in regards to dogs, maybe cats and people. We think of lameness as a limp or not um, ambulating normally, like we're not walking correctly or the horse isn't moving correctly. But lameness can happen in reptiles and it really could be any of these things that are listed here, general immobility or a reluctance to move. But I wanna point out that any abnormal locomotion whatsoever could be considered lameness. So even in species like legless lizards and snakes that don't have limbs, they can still locomote in an abnormal manner and that is what we would call lameness and it could indicate pain. A decreased tendency to coil was specifically mentioned in regards to snakes. But I wanted to say that if you have a species of reptile, whether it's a snake or something else, that has a prehensile tail, consider that if they're not using that tail normally, or they're not using that tail at all, or if they're holding it in a very unusual manner, that it could mean that something's wrong with the animal as a whole or with the tail, or that they're experiencing some kind of pain and that's why they're not using it appropriately. Discoloration of the skin, and then skin darkening, and that is mentioned specifically in regard to bearded dragons and chameleons. And then dull or closed eyes, which I will talk about a little bit more. Not all reptiles have eyelids, so they can't all close their eyes. If you have a reptile that does have eyelids and can close their eyes, 
and they are blinking more slowly than usual or faster than they usually do. It can be an indication that they are uncomfortable or in pain. Or if they are keeping those eyes closed either partially or all the way, and that's not usual, it can indicate that they're in pain. Now, dull eyes would be for things like snakes who don't have eyelids, so their eyes appear open all the time. But if you really watch your snake's eye behavior, you'll see that you can tell when they're alert, you can tell when they're focusing on things, you can tell when they're orienting to things in their environment, you can see eye movement, and you can see a generalized brightness of the eye when they're alert and paying attention. So if you notice that your snake's eyes are dull and they're just unresponsive, it can be an indicator that the animal is in pain. So in summation, reptiles can and do experience pain. When there is an absence of normal behavior from your reptile, or if they're displaying abnormal behavior, consider a veterinary exam to rule out pain before or while you're investigating other possible causes. So of course, if your animal isn't engaging in an activity that they normally engage in, or if they're behaving aggressively and they're normally not aggressive or anything's unusual, there can be other reasons why they might behave that way and you should investigate those, but you should also rule out pain and that is one of the first things that you should rule out before you start looking at other possibilities. The ability to differentiate between normal and abnormal behaviors is an important aspect of capital reptile care and medical assessment. So if you are interacting with animals at all, whether professionally or just with your family animals, you really need to be able to recognize when they are experiencing pain or when they are possibly experiencing pain, you need to have the ability to promptly get that investigated and managed if appropriate. These are resources and references which I studied in detail to bring you this information. And some of these are available to you free of charge and you can look at them in their entirety. So the first one is Clinical Aspects of Reptile Behavior. And it's actually an online uh, journal article that's open access. So you can print that out, you can save the PDF, you can read the entire thing and there's no charge for that. The second one is an article called Pain and Its Control in Reptiles. And it's extremely detailed, not only in how to recognize pain signals in your snakes and other reptiles, but also how to manage that pain. So if you are a veterinarian, an anesthesiologist, or an analgesiologist, I really recommend that you get a copy of this paper that you, and that you read it because it goes over um, all of the signs that an animal might be in pain, specifically a reptile. It goes over how that pain may be managed, which drugs are most effective, and where more research is needed. The abstract is available online. Um, I was not able to get the whole article free. I actually purchased this book, Exotic Animal Neurology. It's the first chapter in the book. So that article about pain and its control in reptiles is the first chapter in this book. It was worth it to me to buy this book, to pay for this information because it is so pertinent to what I do in animal training, behavior, and animal care, to be able to recognize not only when my reptile might be in pain, but also to be able to talk in an informed manner with my veterinarian and other specialists about how we might be able to better manage that pain. And then analgesia and, analgesia and anesthesia in reptiles and that is an online presentation that was done by a veterinarian and is available in PDF form uh, free of charge for anyone open access online. So it's a PowerPoint presentation that was done by um, veterinarian Joe Bissias Gochia and um, that's his website is birdsandexotics.com but I did notice that a lot of the information in this presentation came from the book that I just showed you and from this other paper on clinical aspects of reptile behavior. So this is a free source of information and if it's easier for you to understand in a PowerPoint format than maybe in reading the papers that I mentioned, by all means, go to this link that I've provided and look that up for yourself. This is my contact information. If you have further questions for me, 
not just about this subject, but about animal training and behavior in general. Um, you can reach me at behaviorucationllc at gmail.com, through my website at behavioreducation.org, on Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. I do have a LinkedIn and a Twitter, but I hardly ever use those, so these are the best ways to reach me. Thank you for spending the time to learn how to recognize if your snake or other reptile is in pain. And please do pay attention to the body language and the ways that they are trying to communicate possible pain to you and get that managed as promptly as possible. Until next time, everybody, please remember to always be kind and love your animals.